This is, I believe, the fourth part of chapter 21. Could be three. I'll figure it out later on. But it comes in sections. But the last section is very long. Because it has the commentary of Rashi and Isaiah 53 in it. But this is part three, the remnant of the 13 tribes return, contrary of your teachings by Rabbi Tovia Singer of Irish Judaism and Kravitz and Rabbi Skobak of Jews for Judaism. Apparently, they can't read Ezra and understand it at the same time. Isaiah 53 is an announcement of prophecy fulfilled in the return to Jerusalem and Judah of a remnant of all 13 tribes from the Assyria Babylon exile to build the second temple by decree of Cyrus of Persia, a Gentile, who got anointed as king of all nations of the earth. He uses Gentiles. Elijah was a Gentile. The tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the one half tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh was so big, they had to cut it in half. They settled outside of the Promised Land, east of the River Jordan, and the tribes of the northern kingdom of Samaria, also called the kingdom of Ephraim and Israel, were defeated by the Assyrians and deported to lands in Assyria, northwest of Babylon, Iraq, and to the towns of Medea, Iran, the Assyrians imported Gentiles to the lands of the northern kingdom. Now Cyrus just told the exiles, the 13 tribes, you can go back to Judah and build the second temple. God has told me I am to build his house in Jerusalem again. And I'm calling on you to do it. And you have free passage. Basically, I mean, it's kind of a synopsis. But that's another reason they didn't go to the Northern Kingdom, which apparently... Judaism thinks that means 10 tribes got lost. Uh, I don't know what their excuse is. The kingdom of Judah was defeated by the Babylonians and in stages deported to Babylon, Iraq. Jerusalem is within the lands of Benjamin, the smallest tribe. You have Judah, and then a small tract of land separating the northern kingdom. It's the lands of Benjamin. That's why when you read Ezra or Nehemiah, you tend to see more of Judah and Benjamin than you do the other ten tribes. Well, Judah, Ephraim, and Manasseh, who are all mentioned as returning and settling in Jerusalem, uh, you have Benjamin, the smallest tribe. But it's because that's where the kings rule from. Okay, picking back up. The kingdom of Judah was defeated by the Babylonians and in stages deported to Babylon. Jerusalem is within the lands of Benjamin, which lands are considered part of the kingdom of Judah. Since that is where the kings of the lands of Judah rule from. The accounts of the return of the Jewish people by decree of, this is God's words, of Cyrus of Persia, 
the first Gentile anointed one of God, Hamoshiach. The anointed one, Ha, the, Hamoshiach, uh, Moshiach, anointed one. Who had defeated the Chaldeans? Who had defeated the Babylonians? And formed the Persian Empire. Cyrus defeated them, including their lands, are in the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, and 1 Chronicles. Hamoshiach Cyrus addresses all of the 13 tribes in his decree. This is from 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, verse 7. You got to know how to put books together, and your rabbis do not. And they did not understand it's written for antiquity first and to be reinterpreted today in the modern era. They don't get it, especially Michael Skoback. And I see him because I've seen him on video coming out and saying, our sages say. And my answer to that is, what do you say? You going to listen to everything people of 2,000 years said? In a time of illiteracy? You think you think God didn't know this day would come? His day? Did it just get past you? Two Chronicles, verses thirty six uh, chapter thirty six, verse two. Thus said King Osiris of Persia. The Lord God of heaven has given me all of the kingdoms of the earth and has charged me with building him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Any one of you, all of his people, the Lord his God be with him and let him go up. That's all 13 tribes. Remnants of all the 13 tribes of Israel returned to Jerusalem and Judah. The tribes with allotments of land in the northern kingdom could not return to their lands. Gentiles who had been imported to the lands of the northern kingdom were settled there, many of whom tried to stop the building of the second temple. Ezra chapter 3 verse 1. When the seventh month arrived, the Israelites being settled in their towns, that would be their new towns, the entire people assembled as one man in Jerusalem. The second time it happened, all Israelites assembled before God at the mountain of Oreb for the new covenant from God and there's two covenants to deliver today as one man Israel. This is the only other time it happened, contrary to the beliefs and understanding of Toby a singer. Has to be all. It'll never happen. You'll never gather all the Jews as one man, the man Israel, in this world. They're too spread out. It just won't happen. Too many of them don't even believe in God or they don't practice Judaism in any of them. They're not coming back. There's no end gathering. No. They're not all going to come back to Israel. They're just not. Well, look at it. Israel, <laughs> none of the Jews came back while it lay desolate, the promised land, for 2,000 years until they were forced back because of the Holocaust. They're not coming back. So you, you gotta think sometimes. You can't just say, well, this is religion, uh, God said this is what I think God said, and that's it. No, that's not it. When the people of Israel gather as one man, and that's in Ezra, that means all 13 tribes, and they teach 10 tribes lost. It's just, it's too much for me sometimes. 
it, it's all 12 tribes that were allotted lands and the Levites, the 13th tribe. The priestly tribe without an allotment of the promised lands. The first, this is 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. The first to settle in their towns on their property were Israelites. Well, that's not just Benjamin and Judah. That's Israelites. That's all 13 tribes, at least 12. Priests, Levites, and temple servants, while well, some of the Judahites and some of the Benjamites, and listen to this, people of 10 lost tribes, and some of the Ephraimites and Manessahites, Ephraim and Manasseh settled in Jerusalem. How can they teach that? Did they not read 1 Chronicles? Did they not read Ezra? Or did they not care? They just want to tell you what you want to hear. The world's going to exalt you. We know things from long ago. Ten lost tribes. What we say goes. Well, Moshiach's here, the righteous servant of God, and they're going to find out. Oh, it's going to take a while. It's taken 16 years already. But they're going to find out you don't stop God, and you sure as hell don't stop his righteous servant, Moshiach, because he picks people with a fury spirit, a furious spirit, just like Moses, just like Ezekiel, Jonah, and Job. Ephraim and Manasseh were not lost tribes, back to God's writing. He's more calm than I am. Were not lost tribes, as many believe, from writings outside of the Hebrew Bible. It is said in writings by sages and rabbis that ten of the twelve tribes of Israel became lost and did not return to Judah to build the second temple. How do you get lost? Find the Mediterranean, find the sea, and follow it back until you see where you once lived. There never were lost tribes, according to the Hebrew Bible. If there were lost tribes, the many accounts of their return in Ezra, Nehemiah, and 1 Chronicles were not true. And Isaiah wrote a prophecy of God that was not fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 5 and 6. Fear not. This is God speaking. For I am with you. I will bring your folk from the east, will gather you out of the west. I will say to the north, Give back. And to the south, Do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Isaiah proph Isaiah's prophecy is to all Assyrian Babylon exiles returning by the words of God. Not the words of outreach Judaism and Jews for Judaism. The return of the exiles to the land of Israel given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by covenant and partitioned among the twelve tribes of Israel by Moses and Joshua is not just the Babylon exiles of Judah and Benjamin. It includes all the tribes that were defeated, deported, and exiled by the Assyrians and Babylonians before them. The Babylonian exiles are all of are all 13 tribes by Assyria, Babylon, Chaldean, Persia, 
in Isaiah 43, God says, verse 14, Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I send to Babylon. I will bring down all of their bars, and the Chaldeans shall raise their voice in lamentation. Chaldeans defeated the Assyrians. Babylon defeated the Chaldeans. It went back and forth. I'm about to do something new. Even now it shall come to pass suddenly. You shall perceive it. I will make a road through the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Well, that's the proclamation by Cyrus. He told them, you have free passage, go. This is God's words for that. It is I who, for my sake, for God's sake, wipe your transgressions away and remember your sins no more. Well, that's what he's doing right now. I have the covenant of sin forgiveness from Jeremiah 31, 31. Torah written on your heart. All will heed him. Why? Because he forgives your sins and inequities, Jewish people. The same story. And what do we know? The exiles built the second temple. The 13 tribes. I think there's another temple to be built and you would be behooved to do just that if your rabbis knew how to teach the Hebrew Bible. This account in Isaiah is repeated in the book of Jeremiah, back to God's words. For the Jewish people as the dispersal of the Roman Jewish revolts who return and the land blooms again today began in 1948 when Israel was created as a state, now considered a country, and the ruined cities in Jerusalem are rebuilt. God's prophecy of a time to come, Jeremiah 30, 31, that also includes sin forgiveness. The time to come when the third temple will be built by sin-free holy people for God's presence and the angel of his presence to return to Jerusalem just as the second temple was by the Syrian Babylon exiles, the Jewish people, a holy seed once more. Effective when I get this book published. Now yeah, they can help or not help. I don't know. God has me say that. I don't say anything of my own. All words come from him. Well, watch the other chapters and videos. You'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, another section. I'm going to try to get one more in. I still got 30, some part of 30 minutes. Isaiah 52. Oh, Okay, we're not going to do the first 12 chapters. Uh, it's an exaltation of the 13 tribes returning. But when you get to verse 13, it's in quotes. And the quotes don't end till chapter 15, leading into Isaiah 53 proper, which also, verse 1 begins in quotes, and after verse 6 ends in quotes. Everybody from verse 1 to one six, to verse 6 are the same people. Who can believe what we have heard? Uh, by the way, in the book, this verse 1 through 12, I got laid out. It's very good. But it's just too much to go through. I think I passed where I was supposed to go. Yeah, here's 14, 13, verse 13, well here's verse 12 since uh, Jesus of Judaism likes to start with this. 
No, actually, they start with 13, I guess it is. Anyway, you should look at it. Go, go read the book. It's online. Keith McCarty, McCarty.wordpress.com. You'll come to Messianic Era versus Day of the Lord. Then you'll come to The Life of God's Righteous Servant. And then the next one is this book that I'm putting on video, Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. Uh, and all the writings after that, they're all God's. I mean, it's happening. I don't... For a people who pray for Moshe, come, Moshe, come. Well, really, rabbis, why do you want me to come? Because when I come, you're dismissed. You're reckoned with and dismissed. Why would you... You need Elijah. Of course, I'm both, but... And you can find that on other videos, but... Come, Moshe, come. And the firm belief that there will be a resurrection of the dead, which according to Rambam, not the Bible, means Moshiach is here. Well, that's not going to happen. Messianic era, not going to happen. That's supposed to happen when I'm here. Not going to happen. Guess what? Anti-Semitism's up. Not going to be a world exaltation. Skobach, Kravitz, Jews for Judaism. Uh, you put it out there, but you can't back it up. Okay. This is when I, I'm going to do Rashi first and then my commentary on 52.13. And he, I use the verse he uses from a Bible I don't agree with. <coughs> it's not the JPS 1985. <coughs> Excuse me. Behold, this is verse 13. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and he shall be very high. Jews for Judaism uses this for world exaltation. Well, here's how Rashi used it. Midrash. Behold, my servant shall prosper. Commentary by Rashi. Behold, at the end of days, my servant, Jacob, the righteous among him, shall prosper. That's it. Keith, using the JPS, indeed, my servant shall prosper, be exalted and raised to great heights. My servant shall prosper, be exalted, and raise to great heights. Commentary. My servant is now the Gentile. That's according to the scripture, people. Can't be Jesus, who was a Jew. Cannot be the Jewish people. And not the exiles who become my righteous servant in Isaiah 53, chapter 11, uh, verse 11, after passing the test of devotion, nobody knows about. In Isaiah chap, uh, 53, verse 10, when he makes himself an offering for guilt in a covenant with God, he came to me and said, look, you go through the fire refinement, you'll get long life, You'll be my righteous servant. You will make the many righteous and you will remove their guilt, which I'm also doing with the covenant of sin forgiveness because they were violating all of God's laws. That's, that's the people of verses 1 through 6. When he makes himself an offering for guilt in a covenant with God from a from a sinful man whose life has been lowly. See, I was one of the people in the six verses, an atheist for 50 years, that God orchestrated so that I would be a clean slate to teach me the matters of this book. No preconceptions. Came to me at birth, spoke to me when I was 50, 
after the cancer, by the way, that he put on me. So we can show the Christians, Isaiah 53, the man's blemish. You can't put Jesus in there. God wrote He knew what they were going to do. He's God. And he wrote it to say, don't try to put your guy in here. He's afflicted by me. He's disfigured. And he's blemished with disease. They changed the disease. Oh, well, he was just sick. Well, that's not in the Gospels either. But he was so sick, verse 12 says he was exposed to death. I'd say cancer fits the bill. Disease. When he makes himself an offering for guilt in a covenant with God from a sinful man whose life has been lowly, full of grievous events, and serious injuries of man of pain and suffering familiar with disease that the Spirit of God alights upon, and God is in his spirit, to the crown of God's righteous servant who rises to great heights. Now, that's hard for me to see right now. Now, I don't feel like a crown <laughs> raised to great heights. I can promise you that. Uh, this five refinement for 16 years and uh, being shunned, despised, and held no account, it wears on you. But he keeps me going. He's got me here doing this. He says, this is how we get to Israel. Just keep going. So I did. The stock of Jesse that has remained standing shall become a standard to peoples. Nations, that's the Gentiles, shall seek his counsel. And his abode shall be honored. Well, I don't have an abode. I live in a town home that my parents own, and they're in their 90s. I have a room. And I help them, and I get room and board. Because God, God made me terminate my law licenses. I don't work. <laughs> I got plenty of time to do what I'm doing. God doesn't want me to work. I sometimes think he's keeping those two alive because we need their Social Security money. Okay, that's Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verse 10. The abode of the righteous servant is humble. <laughs> that's putting it mildly. When the Lord... Cuts him off from the world of material things. That's Isaiah uh, 53 8. Cut off from the land of the living. And so was Ezekiel. And society in Isaiah 53 8. And in the end, the abode of the servant, servant is one to be honored. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. From a poor man to a rich man, with the many as his portion and the multitude as his spoil. Prosperous and held in high regard by many and a multitude of the Jewish people. I don't know what the many is. Is it five? Is it an entire synagogue of people? Is it a hundred, two hundred? What's a multitude? I have no idea. Now, two percent of the people of this planet are Jewish. 2%, that's all they represent. But they're throughout the world. So many of even just 2%, that's a lot of people. Millions. So, but he won't tell me. I don't know. Chapter 14, uh, verse 14, of chapter 52. This is Rashi again in his Bible. As many wondered about you, how marred his appearances is from that of a man and his features from that of people. Rashi. As many wondered. Midrash. 